Hey everybody, hopefully you are doing okay on this, what day is it? Thursday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon. I have a topic I want to hit that seems to be keep coming up. And I figured, you know what? I need to just come on and have a conversation about this. And that's about being a slow learner. A slow learner. On this topic of dealing with toxic exes and narcissistic abuse and trying to make sense of it all and I, I guess the thing I'll start out with is I have a lot of compassion for people who are going through this I was dealing with a person earlier today and I can remember having this same exact problem that I wanted things to go a certain way I expected that things were going to to change the the person would get held accountable, exposed, justice would be done, all those things. <laughs> and in my situation, that was not the case. Maybe, maybe your mileage may vary, but I know for me it hasn't. And I would say after doing this channel for seven plus years, I have seen a reoccurring trend where this blows up in people's faces. So... We'll, we'll hit this topic and then we'll just kind of see where the conversation goes. Um, I'm not sure if my stinger works, so let's try that. And it did not. Although it never seems to work the first time. So let me try that again, one more time. <laughs> no sound, <laughs> whatever. All right, so I am going to just roll down the music and I am going to pull this up uh, if I can remember where my buttons are. Being a slow learner, and the first, first item on here is, like I just mentioned, people keep, uh, I keep seeing people struggling with this. They, you know, it's like, when should I attack? When should I attack? When should I do this? I have this one, one individual who might end up showing up and watching some of this tonight. Where every, every few days it's like, well, now is it finally the time to go back to court? And I'm like, brother, you got to stop. You know, you're, you're, and, and I, and I, and I so can empathize with this because I was in the same boat. I wanted, you know, I wanted accountability. I wanted justice. I wanted, you know, the, the hypocrisy to be on full display and recognized. And I can tell you in my personal experience, I beat my head against the wall multiple times and didn't accomplish anything. And it took, and it did take me a few, well, like a year and a half, maybe two years to finally just say, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I, I am, you know, beating my head against the wall and I'm not moving the needle. All I'm doing is keeping myself connected in the chaos, unable to move forward. And who who's winning at that? You know, I mean, and it wasn't even so much. It wasn't even. Well, I mean, I guess when I was playing with the ex. Then, you know, she was getting something out of it because I was I kept showing up to uh, to play that game. And it doesn't, it doesn't accomplish anything. So, and actually that's the next item. And I already kind of was talking about that is you're stuck on wanting justice and accountability. And that's, that's a hard thing to, to let go of. And like I was just saying a moment ago, it did take me a long time to finally make my peace with it. You know, it's kind of like, all right, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to eat the bed or, uh, you know, the ground glass. And that's a bad example, but, uh, you know, the crap sandwich and you're going to better do it with a smile on your face because it was just, it was just this, this lather, rinse and repeat of chaos that I found myself in. And I really, it, it, bother, uh, it bothers me is not the right word, but I, I, I'm really bummed when I see you guys going through that and I know exactly where you are because I've been there. You know, if you remember, if you ever watched the, the movie, The Matrix, 
whenever they first grab Neo and he's like, F this, I'm out. And they open the door and she says, you know, you've been down this road, you know where it leads, you know, are you ready to do something different basically? And that is, it's a tough one, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a point that you come to in your life where you just, you decide to take a different path. It took me a while to get to that point before I was ready, ready to do that. <sighs> now, this bullet, I say sometimes you have to lose to be able to move on. And, and what I mean by this, and I've seen this a lot, I've seen people who, you know, this hat, you know, I, I, the one example I use a lot of, this is an older one from a few years ago where I had a, a gentleman who was like, you know, the ex just unilaterally switched schools. And, you know, I don't want them, I don't want our kid to go to that school. I want the kid to go to this school. And this is, and I'm like, well, is this a hill worth dying on? And yes, absolutely. You know, this is, this is the, the you know, the yes. I'm like, okay, then, well, you're going to have to go to battle and go to court and fix it. And then a month, month or two later, once that whole machine started going, I have a, a follow-up call with this individual through the coaching thing. And it was like, the guy was just like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I've lost, you know, I've lost thousands of dollars. I don't even care. And I'm like, it's like, dude, why'd you do that? And I, I've even, I mean, I've even had, had uh, moms who are like, you know, he's not paying enough and they go back for more child support or something, you know, something to have some accountability. And then they reach out to me and go, oh my God, that was the worst mistake ever. This has turned into a whole, you know, a whole crap show. And now there's alienation going on with the kids and, and, you know, I'm being painted as this and that and the other. And it's, it's just like, you, you got to choose your battles. But the, the, the sad reality, and I'll pull this back up, the sad reality is, and I hate it when this happens, is sometimes you have to experience that, experience that loss, that emotional loss, that financial loss, to where you finally realize it wasn't worth it. You know, that you put so much importance into something and it didn't move the needle at all. And it's, it's hard. I mean, it, 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 it's hard for, I mean, just going back to the slides, it's, it's hard because you want to be vindicated. You want someone to say, this is wrong. This has to stop. And I'll tell you in family court, at least in my experience, you very rarely see that. I mean, unless you're, you know, like Alex from uh, the prop, well, I'd say the proper person. I need to check to see if his site's back up yet. And, you know, you're, you're in that to where you can, you can fight it for years for yourself to move the needle. He was able to do that. Most people are unable to do it by themselves and they, they don't have the, they don't have the ability to separate from it to be able to, 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 to do that long involved fight, be able to disconnect the emotions from it to where you could effectively do it. And if you can't, then it, draws, it drops you right down into the cone of chaos that you basically willingly walked into. And now you're sitting there going, what in the world happened? And to detangle yourself from that is really tough. Again, that's the reason why over the last few years in my situation, I made a conscious decision to not fight on certain things and to not go back to court and, do, and to, to not push on some issues because the cost, the emotional cost, the, mainly it was the emotional cost to myself and to the kids that ultimately it was like, is it really worth a few hundred bucks? And the answer for me at that, the answer for me at that time being, you know, five, six, seven years into this, into the divorce and all that stuff, the answer was no. But I will tell you that if I had the opportunity to, to do that or ask myself that same question, you know, five years before, I would have burnt everything to the ground to do that. And I re fortunately, I didn't have any money to do that, but so I, I didn't. 
but I'm glad I didn't because it just, it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't, I, I really don't think it would have accomplished anything positive for me or the kids. Maybe I might have caused the ex some pain and really had it, you know, at my, in my hand, I was able to do it. But okay, does that really move the needle? I mean, <laughs> if you're early in this, may, maybe the answer is yes. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So, and again, I'm actually getting out of order on this, but you know, the question, the next question on the, on the, on the bullet is, do you really want to go through that? Do you really need to have that, that painful loss to get you to the point that you're able to realize that you have to learn how to let these things go because staying with it will destroy you. I mean, here's the reality. A toxic narcissistic person is fundamentally a, men, a, a miserable person. They're miserable. They're never going to be able to break free from that. That is going to be their life. And for the most part, even whenever, even though we feel like we've ultimately lost in this, they're the big losers in all of it. I do remember times early on with this where I'd have a couple of good friends of mine who would say, man, you won. You crushed it. You know, you've, you've done this and that. And I didn't feel it because it, I didn't feel it because going back up to these items, you know, I wanted justice and accountability. I wanted some, some validation that the, the experience was real and what the kids was going through was real. And, and the sad reality, unless you have a situation to where you, where you absolutely have to fight it, or your best case scenario is if your kids are begging you, like, please, you know, I can't be keep doing this. You know, can you do something to to stop this? You, you're really in a tough position. And and the other thing that you need to remember, and this is some, one of the reasons why I backed off early on, is the kids were still in the illusion of what's going, what, what was going, or not the illusion, they were under in the delusion of what was going on. And I could not see a way to where if I was able to, to, to win a crushing blow on this, get full custody of the kids, that the kids would actually not hold me responsible for that. I mean, when I got 50-50 custody, when the kids were young, I had my youngest one, you know, it's not fair. You have more time than mommy. And I'm like, uh, you know, I mean, they were completely distraught. A long time viewers of the channel will remember the story where I said I had to sit down with, with that particular child and do a calendar and say, no, it's, it's, it's the same. It's equal. Yes, it was, it's more than what I had yesterday, but that's because I had, you know, a, a sliver of time. Now it's equal. You know, you're, you're saying I have more time or your mom is telling you that, you know, that, you know, Daddy has more time in the context of it. She was trying to say like, well, you know, you were with me. You know, it was, it was normal. And now, you know, now you're with your dad 90% of the time. I mean, it was just, and it's just, that's the type of games that you play. And I did not feel that uh, that was something that would, <laughs> that would work out well. You know, now if your kid is saying is, 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 of the age where their opinion matters, then maybe you have an opportunity where you could go back to court. But I've also seen in people I know in real life who've had that happen and said, okay, fine, I'm going to, I'm going to press the button. And when they get to court, the kid backs channels and says, nope, you know, that's not what I want to do. I want it to stay exactly the way it is. And for that particular person, it's like, well, since we're here and this isn't happening, let's uh, let's readjust child support. And they completely torpedoed him on that. Again, and that goes back to that. Do you really want to go through that? Do you really want to push the button thinking that you have an, a, a, an ultimate victory to ultimately realize that you were wrong? Now, that doesn't always happen. I mean, that doesn't always happen. So don't don't get me wrong on that. But uh, the thing is, 
it's critically important on this to, to, to really take things slow and focus time on yourself. Meaning, how do you take your life back? How do you start doing some stuff from you? I mean, for me, when I was doing that, it was like I finally had this realization that, you know, 100% of the time, all I'm doing is thinking about this situation, the X, the scenario, and I'm beating my head against the wall. And I'm like, do I really want to do that every day? And it took a lot of work to take that 100% and start adding like 5% of my day where I would focus on, okay, I want to think about something different. I want to, you know, listen to music or I want to do, you know, something that, that was not focused on the, the divorce situation and the kid situation and all, and all that stuff. And as I started doing that slowly over time, it started to click. It started to make more sense. And the really good part about it is when I started doing that <clears throat> and what I've heard from other people who've done the same thing is it starts to build on itself, right? It's like, you know, going from that 100% disaster to 95.5, it's tough. That first like 10% is tough. But as you start seeing successes and you're like, oh, wow, this is actually working, you take the bait less and less. And it starts going, you know, 90, 90, 10 to 80, 20 to 60, 40 to 50, 50 to, you know, 20, 80. And, you know, you ultimately get to the point like where I'm at now where every once in a while something will happen and it'll be a flare up. It'll be like this immediate, immediate, like visceral reaction. But then it dies really down. Whereas, you know, 10 years or well, yeah, geez, 10 years ago, that experience would have lasted a week and would have ruined pretty much everything. I mean, for me, back in that day, the problem was, is I never had a time. It's like something would happen. And before I could get to the point where I could start to recover from it, another thing would happen. You know, so it was this constant, just constant trauma, constant trauma, which was not, not fun. And the final point on this, and this is kind of what I was just saying, is this does get easier like I was just describing, even if it doesn't feel like it. And I hope that that channels like like this one and some of my, you know, my videos and, and the different topics I cover can give you a glimpse that, okay, this isn't the easiest thing to go through, but I can get through this, persevere, and take my life back. So if you are struggling with this, if you are constantly going, you know, but they did this, but they did that. Take a breath, realize what you're going through, unfortunately, is normal. It's what, I mean, you've seen it time and time again, dealt with it personally, dealt with it with, it, with coaching clients, dealt with it with people, you know, on the Discord, and, and it just, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a process that we all tend to go through. So on that, that's the main topic that I wanted to cover for tonight the uh, being a slow learner, uh, embracing that and helping to get your, your life back. Let's see if my stinger works. I still didn't hear any sound. Huh. My computer is playing games with me. Or maybe I forgot to, uh, maybe I forgot to turn my headphones on on that. So, so let me just go through a few people who are here. Oh, wow. I think I see some old names. I got my, I got a thumbs down. So thanks for the person, whoever, whoever did that. Uh, seems like I, 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 every once or I generally get one person who's, who's just not happy with this channel. And considering some of the phone calls I've received recently, that doesn't surprise me. So let's see here. Let me scroll back to the top. Uh, Muddy Mudskipper says, good evening. Oh, there it goes. It's coming up. Good evening to you. Rob. Hey, Roy. Sorry, not Rob. I saw Rob, Roy Berry, and I dropped the Y and put the B on there. Not sure how to be, how to become the other me. <laughs> good evening to you. You say good evening. Huh? Uh, Sandy says, hi, uh, boy, this topic is ever timely. Are you psychic? You know, what I've noticed throughout the years doing this channel, I typically have, I will have a draw 
to do a, a topic. This is what kind of happened tonight where I'm like, you know what? I haven't been able to do a video and I haven't been able to do a live stream or whatever. This topic is right there in my forefront and I'm just going to do it. And typically when I do that, there are people who are like, this is exactly the information, the discussion that I needed. So thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. It's just one of those weird things that, that tends to happen. So Tim says, <laughs> joining as a slow learner. That's funny. ML says, hey, y'all. Hey, ML, I haven't seen you on in a while. Ah, Roy says, as long as you're learning, all is not lost. That is true. That is true. This is very. This is a very trans, transformative, if I'm saying that correctly, process. And uh, I think if you in, embrace the if you embrace the suck, for lack of a better word, and you work through it, you can actually you can you can really grow from this and improve your life. It does not feel like it at the time. So, I mean, I completely get that, but uh, stick with it. And I think you will see positive improvements. I belong to Jesus says, hello. Hello to you. Good to see you again. Uh, oh, Tim liked my transition. All right. Ah, Tim also says, stay the F out of court. It is a roll of, a roll of the dice with a huge downside. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, again, I mean, it's kind of goes with what I was mentioning in previous videos about my current dilemma of going to court is I, before I mash that button, I want to make damn sure I understand the entire process, what the risks are, and really vet it before I hit the button. I've pretty much done most of that. There's a few more things I need to do. Actually, what I need to do is I need to draft a bunch of stuff, get it set up like ready to, and then have a few people look over it and uh, give me their opinion to make sure that multiple people are saying, you know, that I have a good position, a good, strong position. So out and back says, Hey, Dwayne, good to see you. Good to see you too, out and back. I have a, 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 a strong feeling that you are probably an old time viewer who has changed your name. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think of how to. So I'm going to pull this up and I know you told me how to say your name. So I'm not going to say it because I cannot remember it because a week or so ago I had it memorized. And I knew how to do it and now I can't. But, but L says, hi, Dwayne and everyone. Hello to you as well. Sorry that I'm so bad with names. Tim says, I hope one day karma or the judgment at the pearly gates will make things right. Well, I tell you, man, um, and, the, and the real, I think the, the, the finish line on this for us is when you get to the point where you don't care. I, I used to be in that mode. I was, <laughs> I was in that mode where I was waiting for karma, karma to come by, you know, with popcorn then I was in the same mode where I'm like, I hope, you know, they're going to get it. And then I realized in my, you know, I think in all of our situations, if you, when there's going to come a time where you're going to look at it and you're going to go, wow, they're living a horrible life. I am so glad I'm not them and I'm not with them anymore. And I don't even want to waste my energy hoping that things get worse for them. It's like, I just want them to go over there and leave me the heck alone. I got to that point, God, how long ago was that? It took me a while to get there. I didn't, I, what I, what I just described, I did not think that I was going to get to. And then it just kind of crept up on me where I'm like, wow, you know, I really don't care. So, you know, it's like, in my mind, it's like, she's already living her karma. I don't want anything to do with it. Don't want to be a part of it. Don't want to be, you know, put that energy out there that, yeah, you know, and I, I hate to say I, there was a period of time where I absolutely was that way. Whenever I would hear that something would befall her, I'd be like, couldn't happen to a nicer person, right? Now I just don't care. 
So hopefully that you don't take that the wrong way, Tim. Not trying to poke you in the eye or anything. Visible Friend says, hey, Dwayne. Hey, everybody. Hope you are doing okay. I am doing much better. And, and here, let me do this. There, now I hear the sound. What I will say is that three weeks, four weeks, whatever the heck it was, that my doctor completely screwed up, I'll say it that way, my medication, that was not fun. That was not a fun time. Uh, I was not feeling well. I mean, even though I did do some live streams during that time, not a good time. Uh, things are stabilized again. My numbers have come down to where in the mornings I'm, I'm getting like, you know, hey, your number is in, is in range, you know, so that's great. Uh, per the advice of, of Debbie and some other people on the channel, I have not decided to take that Ozempic crap that they gave me because uh, I'm not quite ready to leave the planet yet. So, but uh, yeah, so on that, I don't know if you were asking that, but I am doing much better. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do this weekend. I might actually go take my truck and go put dirt underneath the tires because I have not done that since December. Anyways, so thanks for asking on that. Roy says, these people don't see the pearly gates. <laughs> their elevator goes, their elevator is going down. Ding. First stop, torment of horrors. <laughs> Anyways, Philip says, hey, Dwayne, greetings from, from Sweden. Greetings, Philip. Uh, hopefully you are having a great time. Uh, Cy Scooby says it, it's circle thinking. Circle, circular thinking. Oh, yeah, that's a good way to put that. It is. You just get in that infinite do. Remember, I used to make videos on that. I'd call it an infinite do loop. You get into that thing where you're like, uh, and if you guys, well, some people are programmers, but uh, if you have a do loop in computer ease and you accidentally say do, you know, and you put the parameters, it's like, okay, if this is true, then continue to do it. And it's like you hard code a one in there, which means it's always true, which means you can't break out. Well, there are ways to break out of it, but effectively, you just get stuck in this infinite do loop that you can't get out of. Oh my God, my, the first few years of my life on this, the first few years of the divorce and everything, I, my, oh my God, <laughs> uh, that was every day. Circular thinking. So David says, glad to see you back. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And if anybody has any specific question or topic you would like me to hit, make sure you put question in the comments. And when I hit it, I'll hit the cool little stinger thing, and then we will discuss that topic. But until then, I will just continue to go down through the comments to see what you guys are saying. Tim says, uh, lose, not lose. Loss, not lose. Well, lose, not loss. Oh, my God. Can you see the, mo the, the, greer the gears grinding there? Uh, one is the end of the game. The other is an... <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that. That's uh, you're bad. You're bad, Tim. Bad, Tim. That's funny. Eleven Kids says, good evening to all. Good evening to you, Eleven Kids. Uh, <laughs> okay, now I know I need, to, I need to read some of the comments a little, th read them through before I put them on screen. That is hilarious. Roy, and I, and I didn't even do that on this one. DSD, uh, Roy says, uh, Almost all battles with these people aren't worth it. Oh, that is so true. That is, uh, yes, I would absolutely agree with you on that. I don't know how many times, you know, well, that's kind of what this whole, this whole discussion or the earlier discussion was. And I learned that the hard way. It was, it was, it was not a, a fun lesson to learn. Sai so says, you're worth more than them or money. It won't change anything if you get everything back. The fact that they're, they are evil and what they did, you don't want to join evil parasites. Just Jesus. I would agree with that. It's so easy to dip your toe into this, into this nightmare and to get sucked into the pit of hell. So, and I mean, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, being judgy on that because I fell into that. 
I fell into that knowing, recognizing that I was walking into the pit of hell and I could not present, I could, I could present, I could not prevent myself from doing it. This is not easy. I mean, that, that's the thing to remember is, is this is hard. You know, I mean, for us that have been, been through it, and, you know, there's a few of us that, that are here tonight that have uh, been, been through a lot of this. You know, I mean, you have, you have some uh, time under your belt, so to speak. But, but I think every one of us can remember early on in this the personal struggles we had with this. So <laughs> there were times I would send the, send the ex an email, and I swear she would just take what I wrote, rewrite, you know, basically copy and paste it and send it back to me. It was just it was it was just an exercise in frustration. Defy Dad, hey man, uh, DSD. The loss of of anyone's child is also a loss for the children themselves, being stuck with another person who manipulates them at such a young age too. Oh, absolutely, man. And see, and I think that's where th th that is the the. Uh, well, let me do this. That's the pivot point on this because. What starts is a personal attack directly at you, right? And they know you. So, that, so you, they expect you to engage. You do engage. You step up to the plate. You play their game. And as time goes on watching you know, excellent content like this, you realize, okay, that's a losing position. I have to stop. So you put some new boundaries in place. And they try something different, right? Uh, I mean, a, a, a common one that I experienced, and I have some friends of mine who are going through this, is, you know, you make, you figure that part out and you don't play the game. And then they start, uh, you know, getting bills and collections and having that go to you. So you're dealing with that. So that causes you to come back to the table and start fighting with them to try to get them to stop doing it, which is what they want. They want you to engage. Then you finally realize you're beating your head against the wall on that. So then what do you do? You stop doing that. Somewhere along the line, these people turn around and when they realize all the other methods they've used to try to get you to engage aren't working, they move to the kids. And then what happens is, and it's not like they tell you, they do something to the kids or they get someone else. to. So either the kids are telling you, maybe a teacher is telling you, you're getting this other information and their expectation is, is that that is going to provoke you to interact and engage with them. And it, that's the hard one. When they flip it to the kids, you feel like you have to do something. You know, and, and, and the reality is there's not a whole hell of a lot we can do. If the kids are, are deep under the influence or under the, the veil of the fantasy just like we used to be. I mean, that's the other thing you got to remember is most of us, especially in the long-term things, we had our head buried in the sand for a long time. Just because, I, I mean, it's like in my situation, it took me, I mean, decades to get to the point where I'm like, okay, enough is enough. And then it still took me a few years after that to, to realize what I was dealing with. How in the world can I expect a child between the age of six and 20 to be able to have the awareness to look at their, in my situation, their mother in that objective way and say, wow, there's a problem there and not want to bury it, suppress it. That's why kids have such a hard time with this. And it drives us crazy because we see it. We want them to see it. We want them to, to choose to protect themselves. But am I didn't, 20 years, 22 years, I didn't protect myself. I'm surprised I made it out alive, to be perfectly honest. So I understand that my kids struggle with it. I understand that they're desperate for unconditional love that they will never get. Hope they're not watching this, which they, they don't watch my channel. But, but you know, I mean, that's, I, I know that's where they're at. You know, I mean, is it frustrating when I have conversations with them, when they have a a complete cogent argument where they explain what the problem is and still can't move past it. Yeah, it's frustrating. 
there have been a time or two where I, since now, since everybody knows about the channel, where I'll say, you know, I think I have videos on that, <laughs> which makes them laugh. We, I have a sarcastic, our sarcastic, uh, sarcastic sense of humor. That's the word I'm trying to look for. Oh, other thing. I don't know if we'll do this, but if anyone wants to try to do a phone call, I could potentially turn the phone lines on. They're not on yet, but I kind of have things set up in case I do it. I think might have to double check. Just let me know. So, all right, going back through where we are. Oh, okay. I had to read that a couple times. Okay. So Laura says, we stopped being friends because as a couple, they, the ex, were better than me. Yeah. Honestly, for the most part, if you have any thought, hold on. For the most part, if you have any thought that your ex is even potentially toxic or has some toxic traits, dabbling in the narcissism, NPD, narcissistic uh, personality disorder, NPD, if I said that right, uh, little realm of the world, you need to minimize your interaction and contact with them. Being friends is a very dangerous move. And it's just because people, people who are toxic will constantly be playing emotional games to try to wrap you back in. That's why a lot of people who they'll they'll have a they'll have an argument with somebody and they'll set a boundary and then it'll be a stalemate for a period of time. Actually, I was just talking to someone about this yesterday. There'll be a stalemate for a period of time and then when the person realizes, "Oh crap, they're not coming back. They're not they're not like, you know, the, this silent silent treatment that 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 I'm putting them through is not causing them the pain to where they're they're coming back and I can still continue to play the silent treatment and and shame them and make them feel like crap. So inevitably what happens is is that person goes, "Oh crap, this isn't working." And then they'll try to reach out to try to get the fire going again. And it, so being friends with these people is an incredibly dangerous move. Uh, what I will say, unfortunately, is oftentimes kind of kind of going back. I'll just pop this back up since it's up. You know, being a slow learner is that you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that this person is as toxic as you fundamentally know they are. And as a result of it, you keep giving them chances. So, and, and I mean, I, my goal for all of you watching, listening to this is that you don't waste any more time, that you don't put yourself through that. However, I understand that most people aren't able to do that. I was not able to do that. I got myself uh, in a few, I had to learn that lesson by getting whacked upside the head more than once for me to finally go, oh, I need to stop doing that because all it is is I keep getting poked in the eye. And it took me a while. I mean, it, there were a lot of things where I'm like, okay, maybe now they're gonna be a normal human. Nope. Well, maybe this thing can happen. I'll do something nice for them. Actually, there was a few times where the ex wanted something. They got their house broken into and it's like, hey, you know, would you have the, the serial numbers of anything? You know, I mean, you know, being nice. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I track everything. So, you know, sent the information thinking that, you know, maybe it would be a uh, uh, olive branch or whatnot. Nope. Nope. Second they got what they needed. It was like it went, everything went everything went back to normal. So, but I had to, it took me a while to learn that. I do not do that no more. And I hope you do not as well. Ah, Gianni says, wanting accountability is understandable. Unfortunately, family court probably won't get you that. 
My last bout in court initiated by the ex lasted 15 months and accomplished nothing positive. If you would have ended it there and just said nothing, I would have said, you had accomplished something. You, 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 you got fleeced for some more money. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, well, yeah, I'm just, I won't say any more because I do know more of this person's story. And I kind of basically said along the same lines already. So Roy says justice and accountability don't occur in the court unless it's civil court. They are delivered by karma later in life and they draw nothing, nothing sustained positive in their life. It's, 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 you will, once you take a step back and you start looking, you will see that. I haven't heard this in a while, but I remember in the past people would talk about, you know, but they're so happy. You know, they're, they're posting on Facebook how, you know, they met the, their soulmate and you know, all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, did, what did, what did they say when they were with you? Oh, the same thing. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you think the likelihood is that that new person is experienced the same illusion, the love bombing, the mirroring that you experienced when they entrapped you. Oh yeah. It's a bitter pill. It's hard to, it's hard. It's hard to swallow. I, yeah. Is there a reason super chats aren't working? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to go over here. Now it looks like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't check if I turned them on, but uh, in this window um, that I'm on, it looks like, oh wow, what can I do? I can do super stickers, super chats, memberships, and uh, I can gift memberships too. Um, so I just happen to have that. What I do is I pop out the chat window. I have two chat windows open. I have one that allows me to highlight comments like your comment. Let me just click it like this. FPS says that. And uh, uh, so I don't know, but thank you for asking. I mean, to think that you were going to do that. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. Uh, Roy says probably likely YouTube changed something again. <laughs> okay. Now this, this is a genius move from Shaku. Because if you phonetically <laughs> show me how to pronounce your name, it's harder from, for me to screw it up. And the reality is, is more than likely, because I think I've seen you on here before, that, that, that's your nice way of telling me that I've been butchering your name. I'm sorry. Guys, I am so bad with names. It's, it's, uh, I, I don't know what it is. It's like I go live and I see the letters and it's like my brain kind of seizes up. I used to have to, in my, in my old position at work, every once in a while, I'd have to recognize a bunch of people. I was like, oh, all these new people. Are, and oh my God, I hated it. I mean, I'd have to be like before, you know, before I had to go up on stage, it's like, how do you, how do you say these names? Oh, I hated it. Pepe, sir. I, where did that go? Where, how do I pull that up? Pepe did, Pepe did a super chat or did a super sticker. Did a super sticker of uh, a hot dog with ketchup. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Always, always good to see you in the, in the chat, Pepe. So, Hey, if you're a radio guy, cause I know you've, you've made comments that make it seem like you're into ham radio type stuff. If that is in fact true, email me if you don't mind. I mean, if you want to stay anonymous, that's fine. Cause obviously on the ham radio stuff, it's, you, you can't hide. There's no anonymity on that because it's a licensed thing, but, uh, Thanks, Pepe. I really appreciate that support. Thank you, sir. Now I lost my place and I have to scroll down. Let's see. Facebook. You know what? I wonder if I saw that earlier. Um, I'll, ch okay. Anyways, 
Fat PS says, hey, Dwayne, wanted to send a super chat, but it won't let me. Just wanted to say I sent you a message on Facebook Messenger today. When you have time, I'm looking forward to your reply. Yeah, I, I, I think I, there's like I got a new request and I kind of glanced over the text. Um, I'm, if, that, if that's the one we're thinking about, if it's like kind of long, uh, I was going to mess with that later after the show. I have one other thing I have to do. Then like before I crashed out, I was going to try to answer that. So, um, and if I have you mixed up with someone else, then send me another mode. Oh, and on that, if anyone's trying to get a hold of me in every video, there is a link to an email, Dwayne at dad's I think it's, I haven't looked at that in a while. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. There's also an address to mail stuff if you want to do that and uh, links to the Discord, the DSD Discord server. And ooh, I haven't looked at that. I'm, there might be something else there. So anyways. Okay. Ah, visible. let's see. Let me actually, I want to look. I want to search on visible. Okay, actually, so I'm going to hit a couple of these comments from Visible Friend. I guess I missed this earlier. It says, I just discovered this week that you cannot heal from narc abuse in the stages of grief. That is true, you, that you have to go through that. Betrayal is not the same thing as grief. Um, goes on to say, grief is a loss of someone else. Betrayal is a loss of self. Healing must be, healing must be finding a way to ourselves. It's an entirely different process. Good point. I agree with you on that. This is the comment I just saw that made me look this up. It says, it took me two years for me to get to that point. And actually, that right there is a very common time frame. If I remember correctly, that's uh, that's been my time frame. Most people I've worked with through the channel, the same thing. It sucks that it takes so much time and it feels like it, well, it's just another unfairness of this all is that it takes time because I know for me, it was like once I realized I was living a lie, it's like, why is this taking so long? This should be going faster. Why can't I get my, why can't I get past this? And it takes time. So, uh, you know, you got, so that, that's why it's important not to beat yourself up on this stuff because I sure, I surely beat myself up on it. Let's see, Shane said phone calls. So let me, let me grab my nifty, nifty telephone. Uh, turn, whoa. turn on my interconnectivity between my phone and my soundboard. Oh, it connected. How great is that? And now I will hit the button and it'll probably make noise. Thank you for calling Colin. Thank Studios. you for Hosting. calling Colin Studios. Let me host a show. It's entering the pin number. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to turn the phone lines on. Welcome, host. You are now in the host room. All right. Callers from the Colin Studio web interface. There you go. You guys get to hear the back end stuff. All right. So, hopefully I I don't I didn't screw that up. But what I got to do now, <clears throat> excuse me, is say, uh, let's see here. Let's go. Not that one. If you want to call into the show, if you scroll down in the description of the video, you will see the number. But if you're listening to me, you can dial 1-424-373-5483. That's 1-424-373-5483. So, and I will see if anyone calls in. Thanks for bringing that up, Shane. Uh, Shane Cause I, I, I kind of got, I forgot. Laura says the family court business can end horribly for generations to come. I think most of the time that is the case. And the people who are mature and are not dealing with disordered people who can go through court and amicably deal with this. It just, and I've known a few, I know a few people who, who have, who have been able to do that and it doesn't turn into a complete nightmare. 
We're just a lucky few that get to experience this. So, all righty. Actually, there is a call coming in. Huh. All right. I'm not sure what this one's about, but we're going to give it a go. Let me see if I can uh, hit the button to make this work. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, Dwayne. What's up? Hey, how's it going? How are you doing tonight? Good. Um, you know, I heard a lot of the points that you were touching on today and, um, you know, I've been through the ringer and I've been through a lot of things that you're talking about and I'm quite some years removed, but the fight is still real. Oh know? yeah, it is. Um, I have 50, 50. I've had it for, you know, like six or like about six or seven years now, you know, my kids are getting older and, um, you know, you know, for the people that are like entering this situation, you know, um, you know, I, I really wanted to give them, you know, some pointers and, you know, I, I, and I get it, you know, like you never, like you never expect to be in these situations when you get into them and you never really know how hard you have to fight. Yeah. Um, but you know, my best, advice and it sounds crazy is you have to go for full custody right away you yeah. have to like straight out the box you have to i mean i don't care if she had the kids full time or if he had the kids full time whatever it is you have to go for full custody right away that's it straight away you yep. have to um that's my best course um advice i would have done it if i would have known better at the time yeah me too and, i agree um, with you yeah i you know and you 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 have to minimize the damage that these people have over your kids you have to minimize the time that they have that they have with your kids yeah it's just it's just the way it is you know what i mean you i mean you I and mean, then you probably, from your perspective, you've seen the damage that, you know, they can do on them in such a short period of time or how they oh, yeah. can reverse things and just manipulate them so quickly and how they have such control over them and manipulation. It just, it can happen in like a split second, you know, I mean, I'm sure you can attest to that. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, if you and if you don't and have your guard any, up with it, they they can do. I mean, they they'll leverage off a wedge issue to do exactly what you just said. I mean, I still deal with it today. You know, my kids are older now; they're in their teenage years, and I'm still just dealing with this nonsense. You know, and it's and I finally went no contact with my ex, like as of like within the past couple of months. So I was like, I can't deal with it anymore. I was like, I have to. You know, she was starting to wedge, you know, wedge issue like yeah. my sister, you know, and, you know, I had to go full contact with both of them because things were just getting out of control. And I'm like, I have to block both of them. And it sounds crazy, right? But I'm like, I have an email and there it is. I mean, I, dude, I have full contact with the schools and the, and the, right. and the uh, teachers and the uh, and the doctors and stuff. And it's like, you have to for your own sanity. Like I, my life has gotten like so much better just in that short More period peaceful, of time. Right? You know what I mean? Like, Oh my gosh. Like, I'm like, why didn't, I'm like, why was I not doing this? Like five years ago. You know what I mean? Maybe because you were a slow learner, like the topic of the video. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but yeah, I know. you know, I mean, it's just, I know. <laughs> your, your topics are always on point, but you know, you, right. Cause like, yeah. we, you know, like most of us, most of us are like empathetic, right. So oh, yeah. We always want to like, we always want to give the benefit of the doubt, right. Yep. We always want to be conscientious and, you know, playing the game and just being the better person. Right. You, you can't do that. 
You cannot do that. You can never do that. You have, you have to really stick with the playbook that we talk about. They're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. And you know what? The best way you can do it is to cut them off at the first game plan. And that's it. You know, like, yeah. So, you know, you know, this, I'm not, trying to be no expert or anything like that but i mean the the best course of action you can do is to really get as much custody time with your children as possible right from the beginning if you don't think that you can afford full custody it doesn't matter you can always file for it anyway you know what i mean yeah no i i hear you man and and you know I, I think I've said in videos in the past, in the earlier days of the channel, that right out of the gate, that's your only time to really push it. You know, I, I mean, because if you get, you know, and yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the other thing that you can do, which I slipped up on my ex didn't want to pay for like my family wizard or that kind of, um, yep, went through the same thing. Yep. and it's like, you have to have that. You have to have that. Just you know pay for I mean? it yourself. I wish I would have done it. What I should have done. Cause I, I know exactly what you're saying when the ex is like, I don't have the money. And I'm like, I ain't paying for it. You pay, you know, you're supposed to pay for it. I should have just ex- paid. And, you know, uh, so I know we've talked about it before. Your ex and my ex are like, you know, <laughs> two peas in a pod. Yep. You know, they never, yeah, oh, I'm not paying for that. You know, it's, it, they, they could pay for it. It's just, it's, it's, it's accountability. They don't want the accountability. Yeah. That's, it has nothing to do with the money. You know what I mean? Cause what is it? Like, I don't even know what it was. How much, how much it was a hundred bucks a year. A year yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, give me a break. You yep. know, like they spend that much on, you know, food in a month, you know? So. Yeah. No, I know, hear you, just man. Some tips for like people, just some tips for like people that are starting out, you know, and you know, you know, I've pretty much been through a very similar situation to you. And, you know, I'm just tired of these people wreaking havoc and you just have to get out ahead of it. And, you know, it feels, it feels weird in the beginning because they're going to make you feel weird about, you know, Oh, you're going to take my kids away from me or whatever it is. And even if it's, um, because I had to do like that crazy split, you know, like that, you know, three, four, three oh God, split or whatever, that. like, you know, yeah. And you know what, even if you can get to do one week on and one week off and just, you know, bite the bullet and, you know, the ex is going to say like, I don't want to be away from the kids for one week. You know what? Like they could give a crap less. Right. Yep. It's just, to, it's just to interrupt your program. Right. Yep. But you know, just the most, you know, whatever you can do to get your kids the most amount of time and get them away from them the most amount of time and, you know, and get your influence and your program going so that you can influence them on a positive note and yep. just get your, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, Absolutely. that's the best advice that I, if I would have that advice, you know, eight years ago, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and you're, believe me, I will, I've been watching you from the beginning and you helped me a tremendous amount and your videos got me through some really hard times, you know, especially acknowledging like the narcissist and what I was dealing with. Yeah. You know, that's like my best, you know, advice for somebody, you know what I mean? Like you just have to just like literally like, you know, you have to get away from what you think and what you've ever known and just follow this programming and you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? It makes, makes sense, sense to, to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And just focus in on limiting their time with the person that is just toxic, you know, and that's it. I mean, that's really it in yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. You know, easier said than done. Right. But there's avenues. And if you can get in there and you can get in there early and you can get in there before they start making their plans and you can just get in there and fight for full custody right from the beginning. And even if it doesn't work out, you know, you should, you know, and you can exhibit that you're a great, a good parent. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of courts nowadays are really kind of coming around a little bit. 
They are. And it's not always like the dad's the bad guy or whatever. I mean, I was able to get good favor with the court, you know, um, you know, just by displaying like, I mean, my, you know, like I, I took the kids to the, you know, the custody evaluator and my, you know, my daughter was sitting in my lap and, you know, just. Yeah, just demonstrating that you're yeah. you're a good parent. You're involved. Was, you the know, kids so, respect you. The secretary, yeah. and she was like, "Yeah, she was like, you're going to be fine." And I don't know. She she just must have sensed something. I think they can sense things. You know. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. know when the kids are close to you. They know when they feel comfortable yep. with you. You know. Absolutely. And, you know, it took it took one evaluation before the judge said this father. Um should have as much custody as the, as the mother does one, one evaluation. Yeah. That was it. It was done. I mean, our, our divorce took three years and then one evaluation, it got settled in one month. Yep. You know, so, you know, so, yeah. you well, know, the, thanks for sharing that, man. I, I, I mean, I know, I appreciate I know, you sharing. I know things can, I know things can look bleak at times, but if you just really hold on, and just know and just really um, be there for the kids and just really try and, um, you know, I know it's hard to rise above the nonsense, but, you know, if you can, um, just do your best. And, you know, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it. But, um, no, I mean, yeah. and you're spot yeah. on, man. I mean, it's. It's great advice, and I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. I appreciate all your help over the years. I mean, uh, it's it's meant a lot, you know. Well, glad to be able to help. And, uh, and, your, whole... and your video and your and your your videos and everything are always timely. Like somebody said, I know even me. I mean, look at me. It's been so many years, and I'm still listening to you. You know. Well, I appreciate the support, man. All right, thanks for all calling. Right, take care, brother. You know, oh, I got to hit that button to make that. How do I make that? Now I got to figure out how to turn off that little thing. Where's that button? Where's the button? Is it that? There it is. Okay. My bad. You know, he, he had a really great point. And I think that in the beginning is your best chance to swing for the fences to try to get as much custody as you possibly can. In retrospect, if I would have if I would have had, you know, this resource available to me, I would have tried. I just, I thought, I mean, at one point I thought, well, okay, well, I'm not going to push for that because it's going to look funny. And then hopefully somebody will see that there's a problem. I was actually still naive enough to think and have faith in the system that they would recognize a problem and make a decision that would actually be in the best case of the kids. And that did not happen. So... Let's see. Uh, I do have another caller. Let me uh, let me just double check the comments before before I do that in case I missed any. Well, I know I'm missing stuff. So and if you want to get my attention, if if I've missed something, go ahead and just re re put it re uh, uh, post it. So I will try to see that. And on that, I am going to. Unmute this and go to the next. Hello and welcome to the show. Are you there? Hey, this is Wise. Hey, hey man. From you, sir. Hey, there you go. You're on line two. Caller on line two, or line three, actually. What's going on, man? Yeah, one of them. Probably not the number you're used to seeing me from, but it's the other line I have. No worries. Um, so it's doing pretty good. Um, well, at this point, you know, I've given up on most of the, the legal stuff because it's generally a lost cause. But uh, the, the only thing I will say is if it's something safety related, if you don't do it, you might regret it. You know, yeah, so in my case, true. We, we had something that happened Christmas Day, you know, a whopping three hours into the parenting time, whereas my oldest got smacked in the face. Um, this was not even three weeks after me being in court where I was like, you know, guys, this, this deal that you just brokered is garbage. And, you know, this right. is, we're going to be back. And sure enough, we're back again. Um, the one thing I will say, though, you know, 
people often try to concentrate on the courts. And don't get me wrong. I, I know the feeling to do it, but it's the worst form you can waste your time on. Oh, God. You know, if you that's can concentrate sure. on making positive things with the kids, that's the only way the kids are going to make out. You know, like often we spend so much time with the so-called justice boner. Yeah. That, you know, we totally miss the overall goal here, which oh. is well it's put. not your ex. It's not the courts. None of these matter. You know, it's just the kids. And, you know, I'm having a massive win with the oldest. Um, lost a little time with the youngest, but, you know, whatever. It'll fluctuate. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I realized is you're not winning against me. You're winning against the kids. I'm just a placeholder. You know, I'm just trying to do the right thing. So you're not really winning against me. You're winning against our kids' future. And it's like, well. Oh, yeah. That's sad for you, but I've done what I can, you know? Exactly. So, you know, one of the things is one of the other folks had said um, in the chat, I think it was, is, you know, don't lie down with the pigs. They rather like it. And that's really what it comes down to. These people like trauma. They love disorder and they relish in it. The more you starve them of it, the more it becomes apparent where the issue is. Yeah. I now have emails with, the next where the next replies to the next's own email with an update accusing me of saying something that she just said it's like well this is fun to watch yeah but you know it's like oh whatever you know it, one of the things I also had originally was you know I was instructed by a judge well you will respond to every email no that's ludicrous <laughs> I will not respond to every email especially the ones that even Google Translate can't make sense out of you know that's ludicrous. And I think that's part of the problem, right? Oh, absolutely. If we yeah. go too far, we win against ourselves. You know, the, the best way of playing this game is not to play it at all. Yeah. And I Man, I and I wish I would have... Just the... I, no, I was going to say, I wish I would have figured that out earlier on. I, I lost so much time and caused damage... That if I would have, what you just said, if I would have had that epiphany early on and could have approached things differently, you know, it would have just, it would have made things better for me and the kids and would have really highlighted what the ex was doing. But I unfortunately kept playing that stupid game and just digging myself into a deeper hole. Now, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm at the point now I have, you know, I have CPS, I have a therapist. I don't quite have the school all basically saying, listen, you know, the problem here is not bad. But at the same time, it's just not worth approaching. Oh, yeah. It's not worth the crap show that it's going to become. You know, the youngest will age out. The oldest will age out. There's no point in engaging in this except for when there's safety issues. And that's where we're at. So let me ask you this, because I know the last time you called in, you were talking about the upcoming court thing. So has there, have you had a a resolution? Isn't not the, isn't the right word. Have you had a decision on this issue or is it still pending? Uh, We had nothing. She didn't show. Um, That was Tuesday. And that didn't, and they uh, didn't hold her accountable for that. Of course. Right. Continued. Right. So you Uh, claimed to be a medical issue that according to the kids involved her sleeping all day. You know, a much higher priority, obviously. Oh, they'll come in and be, you know, they're dealing with massive depression and it's all because of the, because of you or something. That's typically how that plays out. How kids doing okay though? Whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kids, kids are doing awesome. The youngest is a little bit rebellious. You know, she's at the age of 10, so. It's a tough age. That's a fun time. And then (laughs) the 14 year old is, well, 14 and. You know, teenage years, uh, good luck. You know, buckle up and uh, enjoy the ride. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Any any other words of wisdom you want to part on everybody? Yeah, pick your battles. Most of them aren't worth it. Most of them seem like they're worth it at the time. But and they're not. As time goes on, you realize that the only way to win this is not to play the game. You yep. know, the win is not with the courts. The win is not with, you know, a custody evaluator or anyone else. 
it's merely with the kids. And if you can spend your time and effort there, even if you have no custody, you know, even if you can get a note to them legally, of course, yeah, um, they'll remember that long term. They're not stupid. They may be buying in and doing what they need to do to survive today, but that doesn't mean, you know, a future tomorrow, this stuff isn't going to spin back around to a 180 and totally run over your necks. You know, yep. there's only so much you can do. It's on them. I mean, this is their decision, their choice, their outcome. Absolutely. It's not for us to we, really involve ourselves with, you know, we don't need to be making excuses for the other parent. You know, my favorite comment is, well, that's your mother. Like, I'm not going to sit there and talk crap about her. It's just, that's your mother. That's the way it is. Yep. Great point, man. Thanks for calling. Glad to hear you're doing better on the whole health thing. And, uh, you know, oh, give yeah, a thanks. I appreciate it. Or afternoon. Now I got to hit the right button. Oh, I hit next. I don't know if there is a next. I'm, I made a mistake and hit the, hit the, hit the wrong button. So let me go like this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ah, you know, last caller was spot on focus on the kids. That, that is really the, the win and focus on the kids in the, in the capacity that you can, because I can, you can easily misconstrue when I say focus on the kids to think, well, I got to focus on my kids and I have to go back and battle this because the other parent sucks. And it, it, it's an exercise in frustration Focus on the kids, build your relationship with them, get out of the way of the other parent, let them implode on themselves, let them be completely responsible for their own demise. So anyways, all right, let me go through the comments. I completely lost the bubble on the comments, so I apologize for that. Let's see, I will do, let me do a search. Oh, I had some favorited that I. Oh, okay. Hold on. All right. Pushing 50 had said earlier says, uh, I'm DSD. I'm going to court next week because I had my monitored visits canceled. I looked at the report and there were several instances of my daughter calling me a narcissist. How can I leverage this? So that's a, that's a, it depends, right? You could potentially, now I would say on your supervised uh, visitation thing, what was their recommendation, right? Well, are they saying that, that uh, that's not true? Are they saying that, that uh, they're observing you have good experiences with your child? Um, and I look, you went on to say they were canceled by mom. So if the quote unquote professional, which you always have a hard time trusting is not backing this up. And this is just, your kid is saying, you know, Oh, dad's a narcissist. And mom is like, Oh, well I can't put my child in that thing and canceling the court order visits. Then you go back and you basically try to hammer with that. The, the sad reality of the way this whole process works, we would expect slash hope that the court would say, uh, you do that, you do that, or you've done that, and this is a consequence. What they will normally do is say, you better not do that again. This needs to stop. And then you go through, maybe they bring them a couple of times and then it happens again. Uh, I mean, if you're not seeing your kid on th that, this is the one time where I often say, if you're in, in this situation and your, and your time with your kid is being denied, you unfortunately have no recourse that other than to go to court. And that's just, I mean, unfortunately that's the case because if, if they're going to defy the court order and not do it. You can't go over there and drag them, you know, drag the kid out of the house or anything. You unfortunately are going to have to do it through the courts. Uh, I wish there was another way, but unfortunately that is 
that is typically the way that uh, that plays out. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Pushing 50. Um, so I would say on that, uh, you said you had a report. I don't know who was saying that you were the narcissist. So it depends on is is the court person, the observer, the supervised visitation facilitator, are they the one documenting saying that there's a problem? Or are they telling you that mom said dad's a narcissist and will not bring the kid anymore and they don't, you know, they don't agree with that, right? So on that, I think I do. Uh, no, I don't have a caller. They, they hung up, I think. Let's see here. I'm looking. Yeah, sorry about that. Whoever called in, I, I inadvertently uh, talked too long and missed the opportunity to bring you on the show. So Ted says, the parent who refuses to co-parent is the parent who is the problem. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. But I also say this. The, um, the parent who refuses to co-parent is also going to say that you won't co-parent because that's exactly what happened with me. You know, well, you won't co-parent. The cool part about my situation is my ex's idea of co-parenting is, is you will do everything I say and I will do nothing you say and that's co-parenting. <laughs> oh my God. Oh dear. I used to have those, those circular arguments that, that Cy was talking about earlier where I would just go around and around in circles Making no progress whatsoever. Anyways. Ted says, our family wizard and talking parents, et cetera, is all a scam and a farce. I, there's a part of that that I agree with. The reason that I like our family wizard, talking parents or whatever is because first, direct access SMS messaging to you a bad, that is bad. You do not, they do not deserve to have a direct line to you 24 seven while you have your phone on you. No. Email is also kind of like that. Email is not as bad because you can, uh, it's not like directly into your device. What I like about our family wizard is you can limit the notifications to where you only check it every couple of days or once a day, or whatever, so that you're not getting this, this email dribble to you. Because the biggest problem that we have on this thing is the, is the instant access they have, and then our frustration and inability to pause to where we react instead of thinking about it before we, we just, you know, before we respond and that gets you into trouble. So, you know, if you can with your own perseverance, I'm trying to think of the right word. If you can, maybe you, maybe you do write an email immediately after, but if you can stop yourself from hitting send, leave it as a draft and come back to it preferably the next day, if not hours later, and then rethink it, you will be, it will be much better, much better for you. David said, DSD, after you lose, proves life goes on. I'll, and though it may not show on the outside, I feel grateful inside that I'm a survivor of sorts. Yeah, this whole thing can be very empowering. Hold on. This whole thing can be very empowering and can fundamentally change your life in a positive way. Now, I know if you were early in this, this whole experience, thinking any way that this could be positive, feels completely unobtainable, unattainium, But it does, right? Because it, it, it makes you have better boundaries. It makes you respect yourself more. 
It makes you recognize people who are abusive, who are pushing boundaries, and who are not a good positive influence in your life. And I mean, for me personally, I mean, this sucked. I mean, don't get me wrong. This was one of the, this was the most horrible, this whole last 10 years is, <laughs> has not been the greatest. Hell, even the last few months with that other court case wasn't the greatest, but you know, it, it changed. I, I, I had something, I had something happen to me the other day where I accidentally answered the phone, had a ring, saw the, saw a name pop up on the caller ID, recognized the name, thought it was somebody I used to work with. So I answered the phone and I immediately got hit with, well, first it was like, you know, Hey, this is Dwayne. Oh, Hey, this is Susie. Oh, Hey, how's it going? Thinking, still thinking it was someone else. And after I said, hey, how's it going? It's like, you made an oral agreement with your mother and you owe her 29. I'm like, nope, state of California adjudicated that. That is not a valid debt. If I would you just ask for help, I would help you. I'm like, are you freaking kidding? If you go on the Discord and you're a member, I, I think I did on the member thing, you can actually listen to that. Because uh, I hung up after I said, nope, the state of California... The Superior Court of Cur of California said that uh, that is a done deal. They entered a judgment on that. That is not a real thing. Click, and then I got a text and a voicemail on that. Now I'm trying to remember what the point I was trying to make on that. So I apologize for losing my train of thought. But um, you know, it's just my point. This is my point. Because part of that whole thing was to try to shame me. It was like, you know, you know, where's your integrity? And I remember thinking, I mean, I knew it was, okay, that whole conversation, that whole call was to try to somehow reset the clock with a new oral agreement to give them the ability to, to come after me again legally. That's all that was. And then I was thinking about it. It was like, really? You're going to, you know, you're going to try to use shame with what I've been through in the last 10 years, with, with the letters sent to my, from my mom, sent to the, the leadership on the, where I work, you're really going to try to, you know, you know, you know, how dare, how, how can you look at yourself? You have no integrity. Yeah. Okay. Believe whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Don't care what people think. You know, anyways, and that's my point of this is you go through this and you have a transformation where you just, you know, people's ability to manipulate, manipulate you just, it, it, it almost disappears. Doesn't mean they won't try, but it just doesn't work. Ruben, I didn't see you on earlier. At least I don't think I did. So letting myself not be so worried about losing my family when I lose them anyways, just have to let it work out itself. Yeah, you do the, I, I'm not, I can't remember your details, but um, you do the best you can. If you get nailed with a crap sandwich, you got to pick yourself back up. You cannot allow these people to destroy you completely you know, and, and not rise out of the ashes from it. And the reality is, is if you take, if you wrong mentality to, to, to focus on this, but the reality is if you are able to do it, it will drive them crazy. I think that's personally the reason that I was effectively attacked the last six months, seven, well, it might be more than that now, to be honest, um, was because, I had broken free and it was like, you know, it's like driving them crazy. How dare you? You do not get to get your life back. So Heather, yes, we are says, are we still live? Yeah. I don't, let's see. Can I see? I cannot see the time when you did that, but yes, yes, we are still live. Oh, maybe I can, if I scroll over it, does that do anything? 739. Yeah, about 20. Yeah. It came in. We've still going on. Um, I think I still have the DVR thing. So I think everyone's forced to watch live, I hope. 
So uh, let's see. Ah, pushing 50 came back and said, thanks for answering my question. It was my daughter calling me a narcissist and the monitor recommended that therapist help our interactions. See, that's the... Mm. <laughs> Pushing 50, that's the way it's supposed to work. And the reality is, well, okay. I was going to say that the reality is, is she probably heard that from her mom, but there is a possibility that she heard it from TikTok because these videos, not the, not my videos, but videos on that topic are, are, you know, popular. So it's possible there's like a 50-50 chance in my mind that it either came from the X or it came from social media. But, but, the monitor recommending that you guys needed to work on that, spot on, exactly what it needs to happen. That's, that's, that's the way to deal with that. Anyways, sorry, I got sidetracked on that. Heather says, DST email wouldn't work for us because should, would, she, I'm sorry, I think that's what you meant to say. She would never reply to anything we sent. Then she would start a new email string and not reply if she didn't like what we said. I, I mean, The only reason I'm laughing is because as you're saying that, I'm like, oh my God, I remember those days. And then what I would do, you know, I would, I would often like send the same email or, you know, forward it or whatever so that it was part of the chain. And then she would like, you know, I'm not answering that. You're, you're saying the same thing. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're asking me the same question over and over again. You're harassing me. PBA. Oh, I don't know what that, I can't remember what that means. And then you went on to, oh, Laura said PBA cards should be outlawed. PBA, PBA. I don't know what that is. Darn the luck. All right, let's see here. All right, I'm just going through some more comments. I guess technically I probably need to wrap it up. I don't know if the sun's still out, out here in sunny California. Um, but I need to, uh, I, I, there's some stuff I need to do outside before it gets way dark. Where are we at? We had an hour and a half. All right, I'm just circling around. If anyone has any last minute questions I didn't hit, make sure you throw them in there right now. And I will, uh, I will hit that. Uh, otherwise, we shall wrap it up. Ooh, Ted says, I saw Divorce Corp. Yes, the entire system is evil and mentally sick. Yeah, that was a tough movie to watch. That was not. I mean, let's see here. How am I, it, 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 I'm trying to think of how to say this, but it's, it's spot on. It's absolutely what's happening. So it's important to people see it. The problem is, is that nobody who isn't going through it is going to watch this. They don't believe it. You know, it's almost like, I think that, I think the pivot point on this where, where things are really going to change is it's that, that, that legal precedent that uh, Alex Falcone with our Nevada judges won that he's now able to literally bring cameras into family court and broadcast or cover family court proceedings. If, if that can get more mainstream and people start watching it for entertainment, which is sick, but let's just say, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the legal stuff is really popular right now. That's where people will start going, wait a minute, you know, hold up, wait a minute and say, what just happened here? You know, they didn't even let, you know, they, they didn't even let dad say anything, right? Now, don't, don't get me wrong. If you come across like a complete knucklehead, you're going to hurt your own, your own reputation or your own, your own position. But that is that to me, that is the fundamental thing that's going to change this stuff. 
And if an ex or somebody knows that if they're lying or they're, they're misleading something and there's going to be an actual potential record of it, then maybe, just maybe, people will be less inclined to make up stories. Like, for instance, in my situation, in court and privately, I was a monster, you know, how, how you know, I was scared to death. Dwayne's going to hurt me or delete people. But then, in per, but then in public, it was like, oh, sit right here. Oh, hey, you know, what's going on? And then when I was like all backed off and, and you know, nervous, it's like, well, I don't understand what's wrong. I just don't know why he just can't get over it. He, you know what I mean? It's like, so, so they're controlling the narrative on all sides. I mean, if people would have been able to see, well, w- wait a minute, y- you're saying that you're scared to death that, that he's going to do harm but then you're acting like everything's fine. I mean, that's not normal, right? I mean, that's not, you know, somebody who's scared of somebody, like you know, the correct response for anybody who remembers the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial is whenever that, remember that one time whenever they were leaving and Johnny Depp like walked next to, you know, Amber was getting off the stand and she was like, oh, you know, and just completely like, oh my God, he's going to kill me in front of everyone. Oh, darn. I said the K, the K word. Um, you know, that's what you would expect. You know, I mean, it's just, anyways, anyways. All right, let me scroll back down, see where we're at. Oh, yeah, Pepe says, you're a monster, but, well, see, the problem is this, is, but this one makes sense. You're a monster, and you owe me, not but I'll still take, but you owe me because you're such a monster, child support and alimony, you know. So, Yep. Well, uh, you know, I was just a perfect example of me screwing up names. Laura, I don't know what I was getting ready to try to say, but it wasn't Laura. Get a court order and sue family court judge in civil court. You'll never be able to sue a family uh, family court judge in civil court because they think they have, uh, what's that called? Uh, something immunity. Uh, I can't remember what the term is, but uh, that's going to be an exercise in frustration. So, and I don't even know. I mean, I don't, I've never tried to get a transcript. Um, hmm. I kind of wish I would have now I think about it, but I did not. Wasn't thinking about that back then. All right, Tumblr says, DSC, oh my God, yes. I had a bunch of false allegations thrown at me behind my back. And then she's totally fine being alone with me at my daughter's doctor's appointments. These people are psycho. Yeah, it, it used to, I mean, it actually freaked me out. You know, whenever I was getting uh, attorney letters and and stuff, you know, and, and hearing the stories that I was, you know, um, you know, <laughs> some monster. I mean, the first time that happened was at a school function and she was like, oh, hi, how are you? Just sit right here. Why don't you sit right here? And I'm like, um, you're telling everyone you're scared to death that you need, you know, you need protection she didn't actually ask for a protective order. Uh, and I'm just like, what in the world, you know? And I, w- I, I, I mean, I wish, I wish I would have had qualified immunity. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. That's what I couldn't remember. I knew, immun- I knew immunity was in there. <laughs> Sue in, uh, lovely says, Sue in civil court for financial abuse. See, the problem is I don't think you have any standing on it, right? I mean, I don't think you're going to, you would actually be able to do it and have a, have a case. I mean, maybe there's some court law that would, would work on it, but I seriously doubt it. You know, I mean, we were talking earlier about family court, you know, there's no justice in family court. And I flippantly said, but in civil court, yeah, I mean, civil court's different. They follow, you know, they follow rules and, and the process. That's why I was able to get my thing thrown out because on by process and statute, what was done wasn't legal. I was able to get a, uh, I say it right, demur. And if you look at it, those are really hard to win. 
you know, pretty much it's, it's a long shot. And actually one of the attorneys I was working with, his comment was, he goes, I, I hardly, I, I generally will not file a demur, but in your situation, it absolutely is the right move. You know, normally it would fight it on, 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 uh, on the merits of, of the argument, which probably also works better for him because he gets more, more time. Oh, Sai says, I want to sue in civil court. However, I'm being told statute has run out. Yeah, that's the other thing is there's statute of limitations. Uh, in my situation, what happened is, is oral agreements, contracts, uh, have a statute of limitation of two years. To get around that, the lie was was put out that there was this agreement for it to start in 2023. And that's where I happen to find where an oral agreement that's not in writing with terms outside a year is not a legal contract in California and cannot be, it, it, there's, there's no authority to sue on it. That's how I got it thrown out. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's my point is, is that there's, there's, there's firm fixed rules on it. And uh, now in family court, I mean, I'm sure my ex could probably do something to try to take me back to court and family court for some stupid reason and uh, might have a better chance at it. Oh, I shouldn't even say that. Might give someone some ideas. Shane says, my ex accused me of being an addict, but was happy. <laughs> Sorry, I could, I, let me finish reading this. My ex accused me of being an addict, but was happy for me to pick up and drop off the kids multiple times a week. Yeah, that was the same thing. It's funny, that's why I was laughing. The funny part about that, is um here let me do this uh, I I forgot that I shut down the lines and I need to I need to close this out so it stops charging me for it to be open um so my mind was saying the same thing oh monster I'm scared he's gonna you know, he's gonna hurt me he's gonna he's gonna delete himself and the kids uh, but but he can pick the kids up every morning and take them to school <laughs> what what so. Now, fortunately, some of us, like I think Shane said that. Yeah, Shane. Uh, fortunately, we have exes who are able to undermine their own story with that. But sometimes people have people are uh, people on the other side who are a little more cunning and will play that through more and pretend like they... <laughs> See, the crazy part is it's just a selfish thing, right? It's like they're, they're making up this lie to try to win in court but at the same time, it's just inconvenient. Like for my such, it was just too much work to to take him to school every day. Well, I'm not going to take him to school every day. You know, he goes there. He should just pick him up and take him. But I'm also the person that you're scared to death and says should not be left alone with the kids. Right. Yeah. Ah, muddy, muddy mud skipper says you cannot sue family court judges. Your only remedy is to appeal. And I absolutely agree with this. And if you know what, let, let's just double check is, is Alex's channel back? Let me, uh, I'm talking about the proper person. So I'm going to do YouTube, the proper person. Is it back? It is not back. So if you guys don't know, Alex Falcone, who runs our Nevada judges and, and the proper person, he did a, he did, a, he did a thing where he switched the, the domain of the account and they said, oh, well, that's not a, you know, that's not a valid account. And they deleted his entire channel. Um, I thought it would been would have been back up by now, but in where's the button? And right here, doing a oh now I got myself all messed up. Doing a search on the proper person, his channel is still not up. While we're here, let's just do a search on. Let me do this on our Nevada judges. Hopefully that's still there. Yeah, there we go. His our Nevada judges. News channel is still up and operational, so that is good. Oh, yeah. iTumblr says, uh, 
DST, it's not back yet. Man, I want his channel back. Yeah, I need to, I, I thought it would have been up. I need to, I'll ping him after this and ask him if he's got any more information on that. So maybe, maybe we need to, I don't know. I don't know how I could help him. I'll have to ask. I don't think his channel was taken down. It wasn't like it was, it was like, you know, oh, you've been reported and we're taking you down. I don't think. It sounded like he had, he had the account under a different, domain or whatever. And then he set up a Google G suite domain, which is kind of what I have actually on uh, for dad's fighting divorce. And because of what he, how he did it and it was in a trial period, they're like, Oh, well, this isn't valid. You can't have a chance. You can't have a channel associated with this. And they deleted it. So, um, Oh, okay. Hey, Shay, I haven't seen you in a while says, uh, hey, Dwayne, Alex's videos are on Quora under Alex Falcone. Oh, cool. I did not know that. I know. Yeah, he used to do a lot of stuff on Quora now that you mention it. So. Can you sue the, ch let's see here. Let me flip back over here. Sai is saying, can you sue the child of the swindler after she dies, they benefited from my dad. Probably not. I mean, technically, you can sue at any point. Um, but, I mean, it could get thrown out, right? I mean, if, if, if you sue under something and then they come back and say, well, because of, you know, Idaho or Cal, Cal, you know, California civil procedure section, you know, one, two, three, four, five subsections, four, five, six says, you know, like that's kind of what happened to me. I found a, a defense that by statute said what happened wasn't, wasn't valid and, uh, and it got thrown out. So, but the reality is I, um, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier on, on uh, for this entire topic. Is it really going to accomplish what you're trying, what you hope to and, and get any resolution? Or is it going to basically pull you right back into the depths of despair on it? And then that's where you have to look at it and say, okay, what's, what is it really worth it? I think from, from the conversations we've had over the years, <clears throat> It's not worth it. You, you, you've, you gotta let it go because every time you start going down that, it just, it, it fires up the anger, which I get. I mean, it, I could easily allow myself to go down that even with what happened to me recently. I mean, I could let that just light me on fire, but I want these people and this garbage out of my life. I want to purge it. I want it done. And I don't want to think about, I don't want to, I don't want to think about them, their topics and have them infect my life anymore. So yeah, Laura says you can sue for inheritance, but the, the problem is, is what this is what Cy was saying is, is it's been a long time, right? So it's, it's not like it just happened but I don't know. I don't know what the statute of limitations. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can uh, you can go talk to an attorney and and if there's enough money there, they might be willing to uh, to do it to do it on the backside so that you know if it's a hundred thousand dollars, they'll take ninety thousand of it to get it for you and give you ten. I've seen that type of stuff happen a lot, and it's just you. It's well, invisible friend. Perfect comment. Don't let your past steal your future too. Spot on. And on that, we are close to two hours. I think I probably missed, I, I, I think I think it's sunny out because I think I left my porch light on. So I think I've, I've tricked myself. But on that, what I will do is I will say, thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. And right now I wanna say thank you to the channel members who have clicked the button and become members of the channel. I really appreciate your support and uh, the financial support as well. Uh, they get cool perks like uh, emojis they can use in the live stream, which I don't know if anyone did today, access to the Discord member-only area and stuff like that. And I really appreciate that. 
You guys, don't let these people steal your future like Visible Friends said. We have the ability to take our life backs back to basically tell these people, not directly, go F yourself. I'm done with you and you have no effect over me anymore. And on that, have a great rest of your night and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, guys.